If you open up your exercise files, uh, folder number 05, for inside the folder number 05, folder number 19, we have a file called auto login. And then let's copy this file up into the session. I've already done this, and then let's open it this up, and I'm going to explain you instead of typing everything out for you. So to explain this file, the first thing you see on the top, we have our PHP delimiter as well as namespace, which we're going to use. We are using the parse click slash or backslash sessions. And then I collapsed all of that the comments as well as the functions, and I'm going to uh, explain you slowly, slowly, uh, uh, as we go along uh, through the videos. First thing I collapse is the MIT license, which mention, mentions that you can you are free to use. And then we have the class auto login. And this is going to use persistent properties. This is a trait I was talking about uh, and through the two um, previous videos, persistent properties. This is a trait. And the trait, again, is the properties that you're using in uh, two different classes and you're using the uh, same thing same properties so you're using a per persistent property we have pro protected DB I'm gonna uh, you know unfold the comments PDO database connection you have your uh, the, the position at which user keys uh, inserted in single use token so it's a token underscore index this is really important you can actually read through and understand everything you have the number of days auto login cookies remains valid. So the number of days, this is actually days, not seconds or uh, you know minutes or anything like that. So we are going to uh, set 30 days to, for our session or cookie remains valid. So this is number of days and that is based on the expiry that we have. So this is Unix timestamp for when you, uh, cookie expires. We have our cookie path. This is the same thing uh, that we set in .hd access slash persistent. We have our domain, and domain is empty right now, but it's very important to go ahead and fill this up. For example, you have a co uh, file called parse click, so you can go ahead and type www.parseclick.net, and you can fill this up. Since we don't have anything right now, and we're using local host, that's why this is empty. And uh, secure, no. Uh, whether a cookie should be sent by only over a secure connection. So secure connection is no, but we're going to change this in the future and then HTTP only true. This is, uh, is a Boolean value, either true or false, whether a cookie should be accessible only through HTTP port protocol. If I open up this uh, constructor and uh, the method itself, you have uh, two parameters in your constructor. First one is uh, mandatory or compulsory, and then the second one is optional because this is set to zero. So, so this is not something that you want uh, always to provide. So this is optional, uh, whether you set something uh, equal to something else. And so this is token index merge user key to single use uh, token that as we uh, talked about in the first of this uh, section. And then we're going to set the database, uh, this DB or whatever the attribute on the top you have. Let's just go back on the top. So this is database connection, PDO database connection. We quickly assign it to the DB whenever we're using this class. This is really important. And then we have our if statement, which checks PDO error mode. So we have uh, you know, used this already in our connection. I just moved it right here and removed from our connection, if you remember it. Then I have this this token index underscore index, which is uh, you know mentions in the top. I'm highlighting for you to be able to much see it clearly, and then assign it to token index less than or equals to 31. If if it is then 30, uh, you know we're gonna assign it token index to 31. So what this means is this is a you know if else a statement or let's just a ternary operator we call this, and what this does. Uh, the, the value token index should be between 0 to 31 inclusive. So that's why you're using 31. So if value is greater or equal to, uh, you know, 31, that's, uh, it's, I mean, less than or equal to 31, that's all right. So we don't do anything. Otherwise, we're going to assign it to 31 if it's greater than that. 
uh, which is opposite this. So opposite this it means greater than 31. So opposite this like this is going to make it greater than 31. So this is just only checks to see if it's uh, 0 to 31. So that's fine. If it's not, it's going to assign it to 31. And then we're using the expiry date and assign it to the current time plus this lifetime days, which is uh, uh, this lifetime days, which is equal to 30 days. So 30. This is how we you know transfer this to the days. So 60 seconds, 60 days. I mean 60 seconds, 60 minutes is gonna be uh, you know this is gonna be one hour, then one hour plus I mean uh, multiplied to 24 is gonna be 24 hours. So 30 days, this is how 30 days translate to 24. I mean 30 days. So 30, whatever you put it right here, is gonna get it, it's gonna come right here. So if you assign, the, if you multiply all of this together, let's quickly do it because we have our cal calculator on the right. So let's say 30 uh, multiply 60, multiply 60, uh, then multiply by 24. You get, you know, this is the number, the number of seconds. So uh, 2 million, uh, seconds, which is going to equal to 30 days so equal to nearly one month roughly so we have a few public methods Let, let's just collapse this really quickly because we explained this already and we have our uh, you know public function persistent login and uh, check credentials and logout uh, these three methods I'm gonna explain you the middle one in the next video but let's just quickly have a look at this public function persistent login. If I open up this comment, it says creates a persistent login for the user. This method calls whenever a user selects the option remember me. So this is what it does. It begins by getting the user key and store it as a session variable. So uh, let's say it again, it, it, is, it is going to get the user key and you use it as a session variable. Uh, what it does, it gets the existing data for the user and generates a random uh, hexadecimal token, as I you know, commented on the top, and then it's going to store it to the database by this store token token. So what store token does already, you know it, we created this method to store anything to the database. So we're storing this token to the database. And then we're going to store this single token as a cookie to the user's browser by doing the set cookie token. and then uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to, uh, you know, assign this uh, says persistent to true. So this is same as when you actually check the radio, you know, uh, radio button of or maybe, uh, you know, checkbox of remember me. So we assigning this session or persistent session to true. So that's what this persistent login does. So this is a really important line. Then we're going to uh, unset the session cookie and this is gonna uh, when the user returns to the site in an, uh, the next time we're gonna regenerate the new uh, you know cookie you know the uh, token and the cookie to store in the user's browser again so let's just clap uh, collapse this and then fold this let's go down and explain another method for you if I open up this again I want to talk about this uh, get user key and get uh, you know generate token. These are the helper functions. So these are not the PHP functions that you might expect. I, I, I'm sure you all know that. Get user key. Let's just open this up. Let's just open the comments. Retrieve the user's ID from the user table. So if I close this and open up the method itself, it says SQL select this cool UK and uh, which is column user key from this table, which is the table user, and then where this name equals the username. So it is going to get the user key from the table user where the column name equals the username. So it gets it by seeing it the, their username. And then we're going to prepare the statement. They're going to bind the uh, parameter username and then uh, and we're going to uh, use the session as says username. So this is uh, refers to this username. And then we're going to execute this. So this is how user key works. It's really simple. So get existing data. If I open this up, the comment first, retrieve the user data from the most recent session 
open the method itself, it's going to select the data from the table auto login where the column user key equals the key we have. So we're going to prepare the key by getting the key from the session and ordering it by descending. So in other words, the first one on the top, and then we're going to execute it. You're going to get the most recent results uh, and then assign it to a data a statement fetch column. So assign it to a data, and then session decode. So populate this uh, session super global array. So what session decode is, is a PHP core function. If I go back here, I'll quickly open this up. Session decode decodes the session data from the session encoded string. So what uh, this uh, session decode does is just decodes the session from the session encoded string. And you can see the description right here and how to use it. And then we have another method after that, we're going to release the database connection uh, for the other query. This is not really necessary. It's going to help you speed up your queries and uh, PHP much faster. I hope this is going to be resolved in even uh, PHP 7. So you no longer need to use any of this. And then you have this closed cursor. Again, closed cursor is going to just uh, make your connection PHP language even run faster because it's going to release the database connection to run the other queries. So let's just collapse this again. If I open up this generate token and then open up this comment as well, it's going to generate the 32 characters string for the single use token. And what is this open SSL random pseudo byte? It's actually uh, encryptographically strong algorithm. Uh, which is used by this function and then we're passing the 16 because we're using binary to hexadecimal function before this and what the 16 does is going to generate a 32 character string and it's going to use the as I said earlier encryptographically strong algorithm so this is all it does is going to generate a token for you you can use any token you want you can use MD5 you can use blowfish you can use uh, SH2, uh, SHA2, SHA1, anything you want. This is what I just prefer. It's not, uh, it's nothing to wrong, it's nothing wrong to use any other things, but it's, this is just what I prefer. And then using the binary to hexadecimal. So that's why we're using 16 because uh, binary to hexadecimal is going to add twice to it. So after that, we're having this store token. It's going to store the user ID and single use token into the database, which we used. Where we use this? We use it inside our persistent login function. So these are the helpers. So if I open, open this up again, we're having this, our try and catch. This is the same as try and catch we had already, so nothing to worry about. The only thing you need to focus on this SQL string. You're going to insert into the auto login the user key as well as the user token values, keys, and tokens. So what, where are we going to get these keys and token? We're going to get them from the uh, you know session user key as well as the token we generated uh, already by the token. So this is going to get the token right here. Token parameter is going to come here and assign it to this parameter right here and insert it to the database. The session, uh, this sesh key, we're going to use the session super global and assign the session user key to, uh, you know, put the values into the column user key for the, uh, you know, data, uh, table called the auto login. So this is storing the token. Anything else you want to uh, talk about is going to be... Finally, let's talk about the set cookie. If I open this up, this is going to create and store the auto login cookie in the user's browser. As I said earlier, uh, this is going to merge the user key. Let's just open this up again. And then as you have a look at this and then get familiar with the code, I'm going to explain you one by one. So this is going to merge the user key into the single use token as described earlier in this section. Then it's going to store it as a cookie in the user's browser. So how it's going to do, it depends on your uh, code as well. So I used many functions uh, from the uh, PHP documentation. You, can, you could go ahead and use really simpler than that. So this is how merge is, be, is going to um, start. You're going to use str split. And what this does is going to convert the string to an array. If I open up the Firefox and see str split, it's going to convert the string to an array. And uh, it takes one parameter and then one other optional parameter. So this is what it what is going to do. And when we convert this, we're going to use the array 
uh, splice. So what this does is going to take the user key and put it into an unpredictable position. So you're using the merge, which is now, uh, as I said earlier, it converts a uh, string to an array. So we have, an, we have this as an array, and we are using a hexadecimal to merge it using the token index. Because we're using the third parameter as zero, it's not going to delete anything. And then we're using this session uh, sys user key. So this is up, this is depends on you. So let's say, and then what implode is going to do is going to convert the uh, array back to the string. So we're using this, and then this is going to do the opposite. So converts the string to an array, this is going to converse the array to a string. So these are uh, against each other, these are opposite. You could do something really similar. So what this is going to do, continuation, uh, you can see that we have a token and then session with the user, uh, with the user and then it's going to append this by pipe as uh, with the thing we actually created. So let's say this is your username, Hassan, right? And then let me just put this into a comment so for you to be able to much see it clearly. Don't forget, don't um, you know, pay attention to this. Let's let's say this is your username, and then and then this is your token. Let's let me just type this right. Here, let's, this is your token, right? And what you did on the top, you generated the token and then made it to an array, and then after that, you uh, you know uh, spliced it, so it's going to get some of this token, cut it, put it into an un unpredictable position right here, and then it's going to uh, you know mer uh, you know append this by a pipe like this, and this is what your final token will look like. So this is how you're going to, uh, this is what, what, what I explained into the presentation previously. And then we're going to set the cookie to the user's browser with the expiry date that we have. And that's all you need to know, the set cookie. So this is what happens when user clicks on the remember me. So next we're going to, uh, you know, explore how we, uh, you know, using the auto login system.